Well, we're going to be in chapter 20. We're in the book of Revelation. We're in a ser sermon series called uh, Get Ready. And the whole idea is get ready for what God wants you to know about your future. Uh, we're going through the whole book of Revelation. And so, you know, we are done with the tribulation. And we are done with the Antichrist. And we are done with the false prophet. And we are done with, with uh, all, the, all the difficulties and the trials. That, we're done with that now. If you want to talk about that some more, you have to go back and just watch it online. All right? We're done with that now. We, we, we are moving on. We are moving on. We're moving on. We're moving on to this idea, this a different vision that God has given to the church, and that's the vision uh, of our future with him. And, and see, we have a real problem, I think I do, and I'm sure that uh, you may as well. I don't think I'm all that different. If I have a view of my future with Christ, with God, as I die, then I go to heaven. And that's the sum total of my vision for my future, then I am missing it. See, I'm, 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 you know what I am? I'm, I'm, I'm at a deficit. I, I'm not, I'm not, uh, I don't have, I'm not equipped with what I need to know in order to motivate me to do what I need to do. And without a vision for the future, what I end up doing is I end up prioritizing the present. And when I end up prioritizing the present, I start pri prioritizing how I feel and what I want and if I'm comfortable and how I like it. And that's not good for my future. Is anybody with me? Say, yeah, amen. Yeah, that's a good word. It's amen. It means something good to somebody somewhere. All right, we got to have a vision. See, and, 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 and the thing about vision is everybody has vision. It's just your vision could be good or your vision could be bad. Just having vision's not good. Having the right vision is good. Having a vision that motivates you is good. Having a vision that gets you going in the right direction is good. A vision of success is good. A vision of failure means you're probably gonna. It means you're probably gonna fail. Now you know I think a lot of times about real estate. Not all that. Probably about one percent of the time I think about real estate. But when I think about it, a lot of times I think about like. Man, if I was living in the 60s, well, I was living, I was born, but I didn't have any money. I was this little kid. I wish I had the vision to buy up all the lake property. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because they were giving it away back then. Just, just giving it because nobody wanted to live at the lake. But now people are paying like a half a million dollars for a little postage stamp lot, right? I mean, do you ever wish like, oh, God, if I had only known, right? Like if you had only known uh, that, that, that um, 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 Apple computers, what's that dude's name? Steve Jobs, that's right, Steve Jobs, in that little in his little garage or whatever with his other little guy in there, and they're in there, and, and they were looking for people to invest in Apple computers. Don't you wish, right, you had had the vision to know that that thing was going to just go, don't you wish? And, but then when once you know, once it comes to pass, then it's too, oh, This is perfect because y'all are smart and you got the right answers. You want to know, and see, that's why God gives us the Bible. That's why we have Revelation. That's why we have the book of Daniel. So we can know, we can know about the lake property before all the prices go up. So we can see Steve Jobs and... Um, the other wacky dude, Wozniak, in there messing around, and we can drive by, and we can go, hey, listen, I'll give you all the money I have. I just want 50% of the company. 
So, so, so here's, what, here's what God is doing. God has given us a vision for where it goes. And, and, and he's given us a vision for what matters. He, he's, given, he's given us a vision so that we can see. See, vision drives mission. What we see drives what we do. If what we see is just this world and this present and this time, and then we are absolutely 100% going, what we're going to do is manage the present. That's what we're going to do. But if our eyes are, are fixed on what we can't see, but what God has already told us, that Apple Computers is going to turn into this amazing company, right? Go ahead and invest in it. While it, it, may take a, it may take 10 years, it may take 15 years, it may take 20 years, but it's going to happen. See, we, wanna, we, we, will, we will get in on it at the beginning. I've got two scriptures. You've got this really cool thing right here. Now, this is amazing. What is this? I worked really hard on this. <laughs> this is amazing. amazing. Truly amazing. It's a picture of God's vision for your life. Okay? It's God's vision for your life. You need to have this vision for your life. And, and, and I'm, by the time I finish today, you're going to know 80% of it. Okay, that's what you're going to know. It's a vision. It's a Christian's vision for, from death to life. It's God's vision for your life going this way. Uh, you don't really travel that way, but I'm just saying that way is death. This way is life. You're transforming from death to life. All right? This, all the blue stuff over here. That is life-giving stuff. That's love, life, and courageous, truthful, faithful, loyal, devoted. That's what all that stuff is. That's the spirit of God, okay? All of the red stuff, all of the red stuff is the, is the spirit of this world, okay? Selfishness, jealousy, greed, deceit, uh, destructive untrue, dishonesty, deceitfulness, all of that stuff, okay? And this is you. Every individual one of us is this. We all go through this process. That blue line extends in here because Jesus gave his life and created a scenario where we could be a part of the kingdom of God even though we're living in a kingdom of this world, okay? You with me on that? Everybody good? And what, I'm, what God is trying to do, God's vision for your life is to get you way over here. Actually, even past this over here. You got, you know, some, some more chapters uh, in Revelation to go through over here. But to get you over here. So what he's got to do is he's got to move you from here going through all of this stuff to get you here. Okay? Does that make sense? You know which way you're going? You got to go this way. Okay, and there's all these different things that are going to happen. And what I want to talk to you about are two particular uh, pieces of this. All right, and that is the second coming of Jesus and the judgment seat of Christ and receiving these rewards. Okay, I want to talk about that. That's the first judgment. There's two judgments. Okay, and then there's this judgment over here, and it's called the great white throne judgment. Okay? You do not want to be here. Anybody want to be here? Anybody want to be here? Just want to make sure, all right? Don't go here. You really don't need to know anything about this because you're not going here. Okay? We need to know about this, but I want you to know about this so you don't go there. Okay? The first thing I want to say, first thing I'm going to have you stand up when I read, when I read this scripture. The first thing I want to say, though, is about, no, no, don't stand up yet. Don't stand up yet. <laughs> Not yet. Okay. 
I want to talk about this first before we get to the other one, okay? So your Bible, and I put uh, all kind of scriptures on the back so you can track with me if you want to. Um, this is 2 Corinthians 5.10, just so you know. Because you may be thinking, I didn't know we were going to be judged. If I'm a Christian, why am I going to be judged? I thought Jesus took up all my sins uh, on the cross. And that is 100% true. But you need to know about this judgment. Okay, and, and there's a reason for it because there's a, there's a there's a problem that that you that you have. You're not ready at this point. You're not ready at this point to be over here. There's other stuff that has to happen to us so that we can get over here. So there has to be this judgment. He's, uh, so Second Corinthians says, "For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, so that each of us may receive." What is due us, get that, may receive what is due us for the things done in the body. Okay? Do you get that? Every Christian must face the judgment seat of Christ so we can, so we can receive what is due in the body. Also, it says, it says uh, in Ephesians 6, 8. You know that the Lord will reward each one for whatever they do. Okay. All right. See, God is solving a problem here. God is solving a problem that we need to know about. The problem is we don't all show up at this place, I mean, at this time in the same place. When, when all the, the Christians are resurrected, we have not all sacrificed the same. We have not all, to use Jesus' words, stored up treasure in heaven the same, right? So, so we do not receive the same rewards. Are, are you tracking with me? So, so in, in the scriptures, what is due, what is, we receive what is due us for the things done in the body okay the lord will reward each one for whatever good they do some do more good than others right think of it like this some some of us have uh, uh let's say you have different people and different have reached different levels of education by choice some people didn't want to go to the second grade, so they just stopped at the first grade. And some people didn't want to go to the ninth grade, and so they just, they just stopped at the eighth grade. And other people, they went to college, and other people got their doctorate. And Okay, we're making those choices now. You tracking with me? We're making those choices now, and so when it gets to our thing that is now me, Okay, when we, not me again. Yeah, so when we get here, it, 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 somehow that all has to get resolved, right? We don't, you don't just get up into heaven and go, okay, you know, uh, free for all. No, and we're not all at the same place, and we don't all know the same things, and we all haven't developed. We all, don't all trail, tell the truth at the same level. We all don't forgive at the same level. We don't, all don't show grace at the same level. We all don't uh, love at the same level. Okay, we're not at the same level. And so what's got to happen is God is going to solve that problem by having Jesus. Judgment is a harsher word than what you know, we're typically used to, but it is a judgment. Right? We're all, we're all coming in at the level we have achieved. You see how important your life is right now? Has it gotten a little bit more important? Okay. All right. Also, we're going to go into this millennial kingdom. All right? All of us right here are going to go into this millennial kingdom right here. And we've got to work some stuff out. And I'll get back to that in a second. Let me, let me have you stand, if you would, and I'm going to read uh, about the, uh, uh, the great white throne judgment.
Okay, then I, verse 11, then I saw a great white throne and him who was seated on it. Uh, the earth and the heavens fled from his presence and there was no place for them. And I saw the dead, great and small, standing before the throne and the books were opened. Another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged according to what they had done as recorded in the books. And the sea gave up their dead that were in it. And the earth and Hades gave up their dead that were in them. And each person was judged according to what they had done done then death and Hades were thrown into the lake of fire and the lake of fire is the second death anyone whose name is not found written in the book of life was thrown into the lake of fire this is the word of God for the people of God all right let's just let's look at this okay let me get my little thing back up there right quick there we go okay this is what we're talking about right here now, if you are not a Christian, here's what happens. You're over here. You have a dead spirit. You're in a fallen world. You have not received Christ. Okay? You go from right here. You skip all of this, and then you show up here. That's what you do. If you're a Christian, right, you end up with a living spirit in a fallen world. Then you go through all of this. Okay? Which is what you want. It's really good stuff in there. But if you are dead spirit, fallen world, you don't receive Jesus, you go from right here and you go all the way to this place right here. You don't want Christ in your life, he won't make himself have to be a part of your life. All right, and then the problem is something has to be done with the people who don't want to have anything to do with God. That's a problem. And so God is going to solve that problem. Right? He's going to have a judgment time where everything's going to be open and all the books are going to be, and all the truth is going to be known and everybody's going to know it. And it's going to be, yep, you know, absolutely. I did not choose you. I don't want you. I never have, never will. You can't force me. You can't make me. I make my own decisions. And God's going to say, okay, hell is something we make. See, we reject God's will. We don't love God's will. Remember what Jesus said. Not everybody who says to me, Lord, Lord's going to enter the kingdom of heaven, but those that do the will. God's will is something that you do. It's not something you necessarily, I mean, you can think about it all you want, but it better translate into something that we do. Right? And you may be saying, well, that's just works righteousness. You're just trying to earn your way into heaven. No, that has nothing to do with it. The only way you get to heaven is through Jesus. You can't get there any other way. But that absolutely should affect what you do. Faith without works is dead. Amen. All right, then, and then I saw the dead standing there. Uh, um, this is verse 12. Before the, and the books were opened. See, see, see the, it's after the millennium, you know, and, and, and a thousand years have passed, and, and God is kind of moving on to the next thing, and it's, and it's only fair. See, it, 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 it's only fair that, that a price, you know, that, that, that the people that not just rejected God, but actually took it out on God's people. It's not fair that you can murder somebody and you get away with it. You don't get away with it, right? I mean, when, it, when the Bible is talking about these books, these books, these books, John, the writer, what he's trying to tell us is everything is recorded. Everything matters. Everything's important. It's not fair for somebody to rape people and, and, and lie and cheat and steal and, and, and there's no consequences? No. See, God is holy. There's going to be fairness in everything that he does. And so that's why there's this great white throne judgment. And there's this book of life. See, we are either creating life. And by creating life, I don't mean like having babies. I mean like, you ever been around somebody that after you've been around them, you just feel better? You ever been around somebody like that? It's like, man, you just get near them, and, and it's just like, well, that's, that's, that's creating life. See, we're either creating life 
or, 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 or we're creating death. You ever been around somebody that, man, when you got done with them, you were so ready to be gone? Huh? Like, oh, my Lord, if I had to stand there one more second, just all negative and, uh, and talking about this person and stabbing that person in the back, and you just want to. It's like you're just propagating just death. You know, but there are other people, you get around them, man, you start going, Cool, you start feeling better, you start feeling like encouraged, you start feeling like I can do this, you start feeling like you, you're a little lighter on your feet, you know, you just, you just feel good. See, those people are promoting life. That's what Jesus says, right? Jesus says, love God, love your neighbor as yourself. It's the same thing, produce life. Produce life in your relationship to God. Produce life in your relationship to your neighbor. Produce life in your, in your relationship to, to yourself. That's why the Bible, that's why the whole thing ends up with life. The whole Bible ends up and there's a tree of life. And there's a river of mm, life. There's a river of life. There's a tree of life. At the end of the Bible, it's all it's all life. See, because we start off dead. The planet's dead. Human beings, well, we, we were alive, therefore, mm, about a page and a half. Then, then we got all messed up. See, God's, God's will is life. God's will is life. God's will produces life. Rejecting God's will produces the opposite. Even in the death of Jesus, God's will was producing life. Oh. That just meant that was good right there. You know, because thing God is using stuff that we don't consider good to actually bring life to other people. All right, 12. 12 verse 12. The dead were judged by what they had done. See, there's no other basis to be judged. Right? There's no other basis to be judged. You can't be judged on any other basis. Why? Because you don't have Jesus. You don't have Christ. What are Christians, what, what are we judged by? We are judged by the righteousness of Christ. That's how we get into the presence of God. That's how we are relieved of our sinfulness and we can enter the kingdom of God. That's how, it, that's how that takes place. The, the people that don't have Jesus have to be judged on their own merit. And some of us think, well, that's okay because I'm good. Let me tell you, I have always thought I was good. You ask my mama. She knows I ain't always been good. But even now, I'm not good. The difference between God's good and my good, I, I can't even, I can't see the way he sees. I can't think the way he thinks. I, I don't even know how to do it. That's why we have the millennium. I'll get to that in just a second. But, but I, we are so far apart, and my guess is, so are you. See, I'm willing. See, I am so not good that I am perfectly willing to let people die so I can go on a good vacation. Now, I know people are dying. I know people are starving. I know people need help all over the world. I know that that money going in that direction, not, not the vacation direction, go, going in a direction of helping somebody, I know that that money could say, but I don't love them enough. Right? Or to buy a new car or whatever. I mean, I'm so selfish I can see it on TV. I can know it exists. I can pass them on the street. I, I mean, I, they're all over the world, and, you know, they don't have clean water. And I know that, but gee whiz, that vacation just seems so good. 
But you, you, see, you see where I am? You see where I am? That's where I am. And that's the truth about us. If it's not right here in front, see, there's a, I, have, I have so much further to go before I can represent God. Before I can be, see things the way God sees things, hear things the way God hears things, look at things the way God looks at things. Before I can treat the world the way Jesus treated the world, I've got a long way to go. You with me on that? And in some ways, that's, a, that's great. Because God knows that's a, that's a, God knows that's a problem for me. Here, go, go to the millennium. Go back to the millennium. All right, I don't know what all happens in this time right here, but I know one thing that will happen. I'll learn how to love. One of the things that's going to happen in here is I'm going to learn how to love. See, we have, in the millennium, we have glorified bodies. We're on the old earth, so it's the same earth. But it's a whole new environment. So the whole environment is completely different. So like Satan is bound up, no more demons, no more temptation, none of that stuff. Well, you know what? I've never lived in an environment like that. Okay? In this environment right here, basically what we're learning how to do is not kill each other. And that's good. I mean, that's the, that's the definition of good. It's just not being terrible. Right, my, my definition of good is not being, trying not to be selfish, trying not to be jealous, trying not to be greedy, trying not to be deceitful, destructive, or try to tell the truth. That's what I'm going to try to do. I'm going to try not to do destructive things. That's what I'm going to learn right here. But I know, and so do you, that, that, that I can't trust, you know, the environment, the world enough to just be transparent I mean I, I mean, I know people talk about me and use my words against me and, and, and say, gossip about me, say things about me. You know, so I have to be somewhat defensive and I have to, I have to, uh, I have to uh, watch my words carefully. And if I, I have to really guard my heart in case somebody betrays me or stabs me in the back. You know, I got to be on guard. See, I don't know how to exist in an environment where all that stuff's not happening. You don't either. And so we're going to have to learn how to, how to think like God thinks and how to, you know, trust the way God trusts and the way Jesus was. And, and we've got to have a period of time where we do that at a minimum. That's what's happening in the, at a minimum, that's what's happening in the millennium. <laughs> millennium, millennium, minimum millennium. You, you, see what, you see what God is doing there? That's a whole different environment. It's where the lion lays down with the lamb and where there's peace and Satan's gone and the demons are gone. And it's just us. And we start uh, decompressing. Uh, or or what, what is it called? Well, uh, we, you know what we're doing? We're detoxing off of evil. We're detoxing ourselves off of evil. At a minimum, that's one of the things that's happening. I don't know what else is happening, but that is at a minimum is happening. Verse 14. This is the second death. Oh, man. You know, God, God is a God of life. And God breathed life into Adam. This is the story. This is the Christian story. Moving from death to life. And God, is such an exciting one tree of life and the water of life and the spirit of life and the bread of life and the author of life and the river of life and the light. he's the light of life God's will is is life rejecting his will is death you know what we got to you know we, we need to ask God is solving problems what else is God doing you know he's moving us in this vision that he has you know, from being dead planet, dead people, and we're, we're moving up this place to like new heaven, new earth, new city, new, new, and all of it's like filled with this life. And, and we're called, 
We're, we're called, the Bible says that we're going to be joint heirs with Christ. Uh, Jesus says, greater things will you do because I go to the Father. Greater things will you do than, than Jesus. What is, there's something that God is working on. There's something that God is wanting, something that we're a part of, and absolutely it has everything to bring it, to do with bringing life. Bringing life, bringing hope, bringing joy, all the things that are filled in the kingdom of God. See, Jesus was the first fruit, but he's not the only fruit. All right, if anyone's name, verse 15, if anyone's name is not found written in the book of life, then they go into the lake of fire. See, God has a mission for us. You know, I mean, he has a mission for us. It says in Revelation uh, 20, verse 6, Revelation 4, verse 4, Revelation 11, verse 16, there is something that he wants us to do at a minimum. It's to produce this thing called life. Like this generating, energetic, electric kind of feeling and not this. See, that's what sin is. Sin is this thing where it just takes you into the darkness and takes you. It just feels heavy. It feels like it's dragging you down. I mean, you know, you can be in a terrible situation and still be excited. For the joy set before him Christ endured the cross. It was like there was something on the other side of that thing that it made him so excited and so happy that he was like, yes. It's like a mama having a baby. Paya. <laughs> huh? Right? Isn't that, isn't that right, though? Isn't that right, though? Like a mama having a baby. Like when, you know, like Christina, she's going to have a baby pretty soon. We got about 1,700 people having babies, but... It's not all that comfortable, and it's kind of hot, and it's really painful. And it's just, but for the joy set before you, you're willing to kind of ah, go through it. You got to have a vision, see? You got to have you got to have a vision and know what God is like. What is it that God is doing with your life? It's not just you, boom, and then you go to heaven. It no, it's like He has got a whole orchestration. Of everything going up, 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 getting higher and higher and higher for you. The Bible says you will sit on the throne of Christ. Oh, joint heirs with the Son of God. Booyah. Right? He's the light of the world. And the light is what? Life. Say life. Light is life. See, we, you are a life promoter. Uh, uh, God is the producer. We are the promoter. We bring it into existence. It's, it's God working through us. And, you know, he says, go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations. Right? Like right now, take life to all nations. Nations. They probably thought that was insane because they were just thinking about Jerusalem or Israel. It's just this part right here. No, 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 it's not just that. It's the whole, it's all the nations. I find it amazing we live in a universe where we on this little planet are the only, it's the only life that we know that exists. I just find it amazing. I just, my brain goes like, what if God were to say, go therefore and make disciples on all planets? It's just in the universe. I mean, what if that was part of the project? What, what would that be like? I don't know. It's just a thought. Okay. What do you do? First, invest in your future. You got to invest in your future, right? It's like the land. It's like buying the lake property. God is telling you right here, right now. Jesus is saying, lay up for yourselves treasure in heaven where you won't lose it. 
right? Uh, yeah, it's going to cost. Sure, you got to buy it with something up front. That lake property is not going to be free. you got to buy it with something. But what does Jesus say about that? He said the kingdom of heaven is like this. It's like this pearl of great price that, that, that this, this one dude, he traded in all of his pearls, right, so that he could have this one. Or it's like a treasure in a field. You know, what if you had a treasure in your backyard? You know, how much different would it be? It's like a treasure in a field where a dude knew the treasure was in the field. He just bought the whole field. Invest in, invest in your future. Right, it's, uh, if you got a, you got a treasure in your backyard, you know it's a billion dollars. Are you going to complain about the cost of pickles now? Right, isn't that going to affect how you live, how you think? You know what you're concerned about, what you're worried about, what you're afraid of. You, you know Jesus had, Jesus had a vision. His vision was about the salvation of the world and the kingdom of God. That was his vision. It drove his mission. The first century church they had a vision of the resurrection. It transformed what they were afraid of. They were no longer afraid of death. They weren't worried about it, anxious about it, stressed about it, nothing. They were just worried. All, the only thing they were concerned about is letting people know who Jesus was. That's it. Invest, invest in your future. Are you investing in your future? Are you storing it up? Or are you going to wait till it's too late? It affects how you live, right? It affects the way you live now. Like you're going to be, you be happy. You're more relaxed. You're more confident. You're more sure of yourself. You know what? It's like being, it's, you know what it's like? It's like being, it's like making friends with Mike Tyson right before the bar fight breaks out. <laughs> Straight up. You know somebody's going to lose, but not you. Right. This is what you want. I mean, this is what you want. Straight up, it's like you've invested in something that is going to pay huge dividends. And God is letting you in on the secret. Right? You get that You get the uh, uh, special information or what, what do they call that? When you get inside information. That's what you get. You got inside information. You know why? Because you're on the inside. <laughs> All right. Make sure you invest in your future. All right, first you better make sure that book thing, make sure the book, the book, the book, make sure your name is written in the book. I mean, your first name's written in the book, your last name's written in the book. If you got four names, all four of them are written in the book. Okay? And, and, and the other thing is make sure, you know, that you got enough stuff. Like if you were put on trial for being a Christian person, you would be found guilty. Right, if there better be enough stuff in the book to make sure you're found guilty, not a hung jury, not, not I just don't know, maybe. No, you want to be make sure, yeah, he is absolutely, or she is absolutely, they were following Jesus. That's why they did this, this, and this, and this. That's why it happened. See, that's storing up your treasure in heaven, mm, where you're going to spend all your time, right? I mean, a thousand years, how old are you now? You may feel like you're a thousand, but you're not. All right, second, second, here's the thing, second thing. Use the present for practice. Use the present for practice. All right, all right, all right. generate life now. Like, get really good at it now. Like, get great at it now. It captures everything Jesus is talking about. Generating life is loving God, is loving your neighbor, is loving yourself. It's the same thing. You want to generate it. You want to nurture it. You want to protect it, defend it, live it, walk it. I mean, the fruits of the Spirit, right? The fruits of the Spirit is the love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. All those things are life generating. But you got you gotta have the spirit of life in you. You gotta that's that see, that's where Jesus comes in. He's that seed that produces all of the rest of that timeline. Everything out of that. He is the seed that opens it because without the Spirit of God, you can't you can't behave like you belong in the kingdom of God. You cannot do it. You can't do it on your own merits. You can't do it by your good works. 
You can't, you, you can't even get in the line. Use the present to practice, right? I mean, it, it, for, 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 okay, if, if, we use the, if we use the present to practice for the future, we are guaranteed to get there. I mean, if we are practicing right now uh, in the present for the future, we're loving our neighbor, we're loving our uh, God, we're l- loving ourselves. If we're, if we're doing that, if we're demonstrating life. If, I, I looked it up in my Bible, and there are 17 different ways God is producing life in our lives. Like author of life, fountain of life, river of life, book of life, word of life. Uh, I don't even know which ones I've said, which one, I don't know. I can't list them all. Okay, tree of life. All right, there, 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 there's so many that it, the whole issue is life. And the book ends talking about life. We are supposed to be life creators, not life killers, right? Not, not, not damaging life, but encouraging life, promoting life. You with me on that? That's what we're doing. That's what we're practicing right, right, right there. That's what we're doing. Where do you practice it? Oh, you know the best place to practice. Practice on your wife. Women, can I get an amen? amen? Women, can I get an amen? amen? Wives, you know who you could practice on? Husband. Yeah, that's the right answer. Just shout it right out. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> See, a lot of times, a lot of times, a lot of times, those people, the closest neighbor we have, they get the doggy bags of our lives. We're not practicing life. We're not practicing creating life in them, right? We're, we're thinking more about ourselves and how I didn't like, you know, the, the way she folded the clothes or did whatever. I don't know what it would be because I, my wife is sitting right there, and I love everything she does. <laughs> see, I'm generating life, you see. Okay, use, use your... You use it. You use it on your family. Use it, uh, uh, your friends. You know, Jesus even goes so far as to say, "Generate life in your enemies." That's that's that's, that's what he's talking about when he says, "Forgive your enemies." He, he's just saying he, what he's saying is, "Don't add to the kingdom of death." Don't add to the kingdom of darkness. Don't, don't add to the kingdom of this world and all of its, all of its poison. Don't, don't do that. You are here. You're an agent of life because you are a child of God. You're a joint heir with Christ. Here now to produce life and light in the world. And then, and then the last thing is build, just build a vision. Uh, build, build a vision that gets you excited. You know, there's so much to be excited about. And it's not, it's not, uh, it, it, it's not just, I'm, I'm going to die and then I'm going to go to heaven. God is working out a whole program so that you become, you become this new creation in Christ Jesus. If any person is in Christ, they become a new creation. Not all at once, not right now, but you get in this process to where God's mission is to get you all the way to the end where, where you become something you never imagined you could be. You, you become th- this agent of God that is a brother or a sister with Jesus. Yeah, it takes a long time, but the time gets better and better and better and better every step of the way. Could you imagine what it would be like to live in a place where there was no devil, where there was no more temptation? 
where there was no more deceit, where there, where there was no more anarchy, where there was no more poison or backstabbing or jealousy or manipulations or twisting or lying. or You didn't have to protect yourself or guard yourself or try to interpret things or any of that stuff. That you get to be in this place where you are actually free. See, the, the, whom the sun sets free is free. Into, you will know the truth, right? And the truth will set you free. See, you don't know anything about that right now. You just know a little tiny bit. We get a glimpse every, every now and then here and there. But where God is taking you, where God is taking us, the world is going to operate that way. And we will be Free indeed. Can I get an amen on that one? All right, let's stand up if you would, please. That's awesome. You guys are amazing. Receive this benediction. Okay, now to that God who has a vision for your life. And it is his mission to get you there. All you got to do is trust him, follow him, worship him, praise him. Listen to him. Just listen to him and follow him. In that way, you can keep your head up and your shoulders back and your chest out because he will always be on your side. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Amen.